So I've featured Ghost Force a few times on Metrocore now, but last time I did do a playthrough feature on this game, I forgot to uh, add this little section. Yeah, this is the uh, second part of the boss from stage one. So I'll just let you watch this section. Some beautiful textures on some of the buildings coming up in a second. Even that water looks really nice. Coming up after this playthrough, I'll give you a quick guide on the controls and the debug system also found in Ghost Force. And after Geist Force, we're going to take a look at some more great classic games, including a look at the so-called Sega Saturn version on the new downloadable uh, Knights, which is on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. Hmm, they say it's got the, place, the uh, Sega Saturn original on there, but uh, I don't think it is. And I'll show you why later with a side-by-side -side comparison. For now, let's just sit back and take in the beauty that is Geist Force. For the Sega Dreamcast. ったな。作戦完了。さあ、次は待ってるぞ。Okay, so now I'm going to show you the controls of Geist Force. Okay, so first of all, the A button here is your standard fire. The B button, or the X button, I should say, makes you speed up like that. 
Now if you keep pressing the X button, say five times, one, two, three, four, five, you get to do the spin attack. Very nice. Okay. Now the L trigger pulls you off to the left, the R trigger pulls you off to the right. Press the L and R trigger together and nothing works. It should zoom you straight up to the screen, but it's not working. Okay. Y button will slow you down, like that. And the B button, you press that and it'll let off those little missiles. So you push the D-pad left once, and you'll see those little blue triangles have now appeared. Now, you wait, now when you press the B button, it lets off. See that sort of smart bomb? I just let it off onto the floor. There you go, see it? The smart bomb effect. Now that you have the blue little triangles highlighted, press right on the D-pad and you'll see they change orange. Press the B button again and this will let off like a black hole effect. Look at that. Doesn't seem to harm the enemies mind you, but I guess in the final game it would have. To reset the B button you push up on the controller and as you can see it's reset back to the default. Okay. So they're your basic controls for the game. Also, if you keep your finger held on the A button, it will uh, perform a lock on laser, as you can see right now. But there's no enemies on the stage, so it's not gonna work. Okay, now on to the keyboard. Now, if you're fortunate enough to own a keyboard with the S3 button, you can press it here and you get the debug user and system pause menu. Now, press D for debug, and you get the debug window up, okay? And you can do many, many different things with the game's controls here, with the game's uh, program, I should say, such as that. Now, one interesting thing is if you go to the user, you can actually edit certain aspects of the stage. Now, nobody knows how to use this edit window it seems you need a mouse, but the Dreamcast mouse doesn't actually do anything, so nobody as yet knows how to uh, do anything with it. Okay, so this is stage four, and as you can see, this stage is very, very barren. But watch this, you get the debug menu up, you go to user, you press edit, and look at that. There's various enemy buildings there. Now you can edit various aspects of these buildings such as um, uh, adding various forms and whatever. But unfortunately, nobody knows how to make any of it work. It seems you need a mouse, but um, from what we can tell, there is no way to access the menus. So you can add different fog, you can do many, many different things to the actual gameplay, such as a uh, change various parameters on the screen um, and so on so as you can see we just go to the debug menu here we've got the profiler info window which should give us some information on the game show frame rate control there's all sorts of different things you can uh, take a look at Unfortunately, you can't alter nothing because Dreamcast Mouse doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't seem to work at all. One very nice feature which you can do with the keyboard is actually control the ship. So let me just get out of this. Go to the user setting. Change the stage. Okay, now here's something which is really cool. You press the F1 key and it'll turn your shields into 9,999% so that's going to stop you getting killed one interesting thing is the Z key is a continuous rapid fire now this doesn't work at all with the control pad X key lets off bombs you can slow down with the S key and various other things but you can see all well, it looks like the Dreamcast has <laughs> crashed again but you can check out all the controls on my website 
www.segagagatomain.com Well, you all knew this was coming. Well, it was either this or Jet Set Radio, but I prefer Knights. So yeah, Knights has just been released on the PlayStation and the Xbox 360. And they say it's a whole new high resolution or high definition version of Knights. When in reality, they should say we've uh, sort of upscaled the PlayStation port we made a few years back. But that's not such a bad thing, because that was actually a pretty good port. So as you can see it looks much better than the Sega Saturn version, but it still has the same pop-up as the Sega Saturn version from what I can tell. But at least now everything looks super sharp and lovely, and a lot of the sprite work that featured on the Sega Saturn game has been uh, changed to uh, 3D polygons. Such as the loops, the little baubles that you capture, and so on. The floor also seems to have a bit of bump mapping on it, which the Sega Saturn version didn't have. But mind you, it does look pretty close to this uh, updated version. The stage on the Sega Saturn version did uh, look really good. So how does it play? Well, the Sega Saturn used the uh, Sega Saturn analog controller, which was uh, very good for this game. And the best thing about it is the actual thumb part of the analog controller was really flat, so you didn't have much travel on the on the actual analog stick. Now, unfortunately, on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation, there's a little bit more travel because the stick's a little bit higher up. So, at first, uh, this game does seem to control differently. But to be honest, I think that's just down to the actual controllers. After about half an hour's worth of play you'd never uh, notice the difference. It does play extremely well, in fact, it plays exactly the same once you get used to the controller. Now you may be wondering, does this game feature Christmas nights? Well, you would expect them to put it as an extra download, wouldn't you? Even for free. But no, it's actually in the package. You can open it up by completing all the stages with um, both players. Unfortunately, unlike the Sega Saturn version, there's no presents. Yeah. In fact, the game's missing quite a few options with the Sega Saturn version had, such as two player mode. So while there may be no presents in Christmas Night mode, you do actually get a lot of extras in the game, such as um, that section there we can see various different trinkets and art from the Night's world. We also got a lot of movies which feature all the opening and ending movies, plus an interview. Now you're probably wondering how does the Xbox version look compared to the Sega Saturn? Well the Xbox actually has what they call Sega Saturn mode or classic mode, which apparently should be the Sega Saturn original. But it's not. As you can see straight away, the Xbox 360 version is a completely different resolution. It's actually square, as the Sega Saturn version isn't. And also the Sega Saturn version used the mesh effect, which on the uh, Xbox so-called Sega Saturn original version doesn't use a mesh effect. And another thing is the camera is pulled out more. Now you can't really see it so much on this section where Knights is flying. 
just look what happens when I go to a walking around section. You can clearly see that the camera is pulled out more, so you can see more of the scenery on the uh, Xbox version. So the Xbox version does look a lot more richer in colours, but that might be due to the fact that Saturn's going through RGB and the Xbox is going through uh, HDMI. Okay, you'll also notice the Xbox is a lot slower as well. So here we go, we go down to uh, the water, walking. And you'll notice that the camera is pulled out more so you can actually see more of the actual cliffs. This isn't due to the resolution, it is actually higher up the camera. So it's not exactly a Sega Saturn version as they say. But still, you get a whole new version of Knights, plus a classic version. A worthy buy. Well, before Metal Gear Solid really took off and Kojima became so full of himself, he used to make some really nice games which didn't feature Metal Gear. This is Police Nods, one of his true masterpieces, and the sort of unofficial follow-up to Snatcher. Now this is available for the Sega Saturn and the PlayStation. Basically both versions are pretty much identical really, apart from the Sega Saturn seems to load faster and save a hell of a lot faster. Both versions have the use of a light gun, the uh, Sega Saturn version uses the virtual cop gun, and the PlayStation version, well I'm not sure what gun that uses, maybe the horned owl gun, I really don't know, maybe the point blank gun, who knows. I can't say I've uh, actually tried it with the gun on the PlayStation, but it does work with a light gun. But then again, that's a bit pointless anyway, because on modern TVs, neither gun will work. So what is Police Not? Well, basically it's a futuristic, not sci-fi, but sometime in the future detective adventure game. And it features some stunning animation as well from AIC. It used to make some of the best animation classics in uh, the 90s. Including one of my favourite animes, which was uh, Bubblegum Crisis. Okay, so as the story goes, is um, Jonathan Ingram, who's our main guy in this game, used to work for the police knots in space, and he had an accident and he was busted off into space, but he was frozen, so his body was preserved. They find him, I think it was like 25 years later, he comes back to Earth, and he's now talking about his wife, who he was married to, but she thought he was dead, so she moved on and married a new guy. There he is, that's our main dude. Okay, so he gets a new customer coming in for his services as a private detective, and who is it? Yep, that's right. 
his ex-wife Lorraine. Of course, she is now 25 years older than him. So, and she's in a spot of trouble. And now her uh, husband has been... Um, well, I won't say what's going on, just in case you want to play the game. But uh, he's in a bit of trouble. And she comes back to uh, Jonathan and uh, asks, asks him for a bit of advice and maybe, you know, solve the case. Lorraine. Unfortunately, her husband's in deep shit. Now, I've edited out quite a lot of uh, the actual options and talking to uh, the characters, because, to be honest, it's all in Japanese, and I might bore, this, bore you stiff, so I'll cut it all out. But yeah, basically, um, you've got to answer questions, uh, take down what they say, question about what they just told you, and, you know, the typical of that of a detective game. Now you may be thinking, what's the point? Because it's all in Japanese. Well, the PlayStation version actually got a fan sub. You can actually download the entire game, complete with the fan sub built in in English. But if you do own the original game, I believe you can actually buy a patch for it, which you can apply to the original game and have it all in English as well. Lorraine. Okay, so this is where the action starts in the game. So you've done a bit of detective work, now it's time to get your gun out and blast the shit out of the bad guy. And of course, if you've got a light gun, this is where you'd use it. And actually, from, uh, if my memory serves me right, the Sega Saturn version is also compatible with the mouse as well. You can actually use the mouse for these sections, which uh, would work really good. I can't actually remember using the mouse myself, but I'm pretty sure it is compatible. But for this uh, video's purpose, I'm using the uh, Knight's Analog Controller. You can use the standard controller as well. So you shoot this guy a bit. You also got a advertisement for Speed Kings there, which was a Konami arcade and also brought it to the PlayStation. Surprised they kept that in for the Sega Saturn version. So anyway, you shoot that guy a few times and you track him down to this alley. It turns out that he's not actually a human as such, which explains the white blood. And in turn, leads Jonathan back up into space. And that's where the adventure really begins. But I'm not going to show you that far, just in case I spoil it for those who want to play it. But the bottom line is, if you're after a really good detective game, you know, something that you can really get into in the atmospheres there, and you do enjoy the sort of sci-fi experience, well, what are you doing not playing this game? Go and get in now. And if you can't speak Japanese, Get yourself a PlayStation and play that version. <laughs> now you may remember a while ago we did a Hotoko no Ken 6, which was a one-on-one -on -one beat em up and it was complete and utter shite, which is why it was in shite of the show. Well here's the sequel, number 7. And guess what? It's still shite. Whoa, just check out the quality of the animation. That is top notch, I must say. 
you're going to ask yourself, what the hell were the designers thinking when they made this game? The animation is pathetic, it's just a few frames and when they move across the screen they don't even move straight, they sort of wobble about. And <laughs> what is that laughable spin thing? <laughs> oh man, that's just bloody awful. Look at Shin's foot! Looks like he's got a clown's foot when he does a special. Oh man, it's awful. On the upside, the speech samples are slightly better than what they were in the sixth game. Um, and the controls are slightly better, and when I say slightly, I mean slightly. This is still completely unplayable and total shite. And what makes it even worse is it's got two energy bars now, and your energy bar just drains away like god knows what. It just doesn't make sense. Thanks, Toei. You are the LJN of Japan. Shite. So I've dug out the PC-98 for a bit of classic Babylon shooting. This is Weapons Free, which is quite an unusual title considering your ship does actually have weapons. Maybe the weapons were free to buy, who knows? As you can see, it's pretty much a straightforward polygon shooter. Doesn't look too hot, but you know, considering its age and the platform it's running on, it's not bad. Playability wise, it's your typical run of a fire. It's uh, nothing too special, but nothing too bad. It does pack a decent challenge here and there. Sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating. Trying to figure out what are the enemies and what actual background objects, but um, overall, not too bad. And just like in many title games, you can choose what stage you go to next. Now you may have noticed I had stage B and C there, but the next stage goes to E and F. What happens to stage D? Hmm, somebody doesn't know the alphabet. Or the Roman alphabet, I should say. There's nothing too special. You've got your standard uh, homing attacks, your normal gun attack, and you've got a laser attack as well. You can power them up up to three times, and you've got a smart bomb. I guess at the time it was pretty interesting, but in this day and age, not so hot. 